Welcome back. Time for a science lesson. Will today's topic be shocking? Well, literally, <laughs> maybe. We'll be yes. talking about static electricity today. Ted Keller, the science mm -hmm. fellow, here again. Ted, well, thank always you. Always good to thank see you. you. Ah. Yes. I'm not out to hurt anybody today. <laughs> well, but I mean, static electricity. Everybody's got ideas, man. We've seen you know little examples here and there, but there is a downside to this stuff as well. Oh, you need to be aware. There is more of that than anything else. It's a curiosity, and then yeah, it's a downside. And of course, now static electricity is just the transfer of electrons, of electrical charge from one object to another, and the spark or the shock that one feels is, of course, a release of that charge buildup. Now, all matter is made up of atoms, which have particles called electrons circling them, carrying a negative charge. Now, depending on what substance you are talking about, electrons can be stripped from one substance and transferred to another. And when this happens, the charge is transferred to. And if a substance gains electrons, it acquires a negative charge. If it loses electrons, it acquires a positive charge. And the most common transfer of charge is, is actually continued contact between two substances. So if you want to create charge differences, right. rub them together. Right, right. We've seen mm -hmm. that. Yeah, balloons and things like that. Right. That's right. Well, if two substances have different charges and they're in contact with each other, electricity flows between them, and that's the spark or the shock that we receive, sometimes person to person. Uh -huh. It can be, oh, you know, it can be electric. Painful. Fairly good yes. jolt. Actually, yeah. sometimes doorknobs, metal objects all are caused Cars. And you're getting well. out of cars mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah. That's right. And we'll address that. That's that can be a serious issue as uh -huh. well. Now, here's a list of objects that can acquire charge. Now, this is uh, basically a tribal electric list, which means the first things you see on the list are more likely to gain a positive charge or lose electrons. So things like your hand and hair are high up on the list, and we all know that that is very efficient when it comes mm -hmm. to transferring these rather painful shocks. Here's some more. We'll show you four more, and these are lower on the list. Uh, and uh, you've got paper, wool, these types of things, all uh, have varying degrees of the ability to transfer these electrons. No, it's just basically what's the material made of and, and how loose are these electrons? Can they be coaxed right. to move? Mm. So is there any way to reduce the power of the shock, like the pain? <laughs> there, there is, actually. That's really what I'm getting down to. Yes, and actually the number one thing, and this has additional benefits as well, put a humidifier in your house. By raising the humidity of the air, you actually dissipate the charge. So it may still occur. Like today, it was raining outside. I still had electrical shocks right. in, in yes, the building I, and outside. Yeah. So it's not the end-all, be-all, but it does help. Wear natural fibers, because uh, uh, man-made fibers are a little bit worse, like polyester. Mm -hmm. Go barefoot. Don't wear polyester anyway. That's, that's what right. I say. The you know, has additional. Don't. That's exactly. right. You can go barefoot, exactly. though? You can go barefoot, <laughs> because, yeah, it, it helps to reduce the amount of charge, the electrons you're picking up from the carpet uh -huh. at your house. Not or now, Tom. Not now. Yes. Nope. nope. No, at, home. Okay. at home. Or you can actually get conductive shoes that help to transfer that charge charge uh, if you're in an environment where that's a problem. And it's good at the symphony, too. It is. Yes, yes that's right. <laughs> and you can uh, also use a coin <laughs> or a thimble to help dissipate charge. Uh, in other words, instead of it going through directly through your finger, use metal first to dissipate that. Hmm. Now, I shot this today, and it was raining. As I said, there were still some charge issues. And this can become a dangerous problem. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get out of your car pumping gas, uh, you want to be very careful, first of all. And when this, is, this is what I do. When I get out, open the door, I touch the metal part of the door, and I sometimes look we'll a shock doing that. That way, when I go pump gas, I've dissipated any charge I built up when I it's was driving. It's better to get the shock then. Right. Ah. Right. And also, if you go inside to the convenience store and come back, mm -hmm. I always just kind of touch the car away from where the gas is being pumped. The fumes are what may catch on fire. And that's why you can, you can cause an explosion doing that. Oh, yeah. it's And there have been cases I of that. that mm -hmm. Also, also yeah. aren't you right. supposed to make sure that if you're filling a container with gasoline like for a lawnmower you set that on the ground you don't have it aloft because of the static right exactly anything you can do to reduce travel time or rubbing or any transfer of electrons basically now is static worse in the winter yeah i think you guys already kind of have a sense that's true i think most <laughs> yeah. people but the why is is a, the why, is a pretty yeah. good question uh, too it's because of the atmospheric water vapor basically or the presence of water on the material water is a good conductor of electricity so if you have vapor in the air it helps to get these electrons transferred and they don't build up from in your person or on a balloon or mm -hmm. any of these things we may try uh, so higher humidity is found in the summer and drier air in the winter. See, that's a little bit more of a problem in the, in the winter months. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. And you do uh, feel it a whole lot more once it starts getting cold and crisp. Yeah. And whether you realize it or not, uh, water is always condensing on surfaces even though you don't see it. So that can help to dissipate. Even when it's not wet in the summer, it's still here.
Oh, uh, this is cool. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is the tried and true <laughs> ultimate bad hair day. This is the Von de Krav <laughs> generator. It can use to basically to build up a charge in a person. Yeah. You're standing on a, an insulated uh, platform. When that, this is at the Discovery Center, and you can see this in action. This man is, doesn't mind being shot. So uh, it's the ultimate bad hair day. Let's take a look at yeah, some of this stuff here. Yeah, let's look at a few of yeah. these. We just about have about Go 30 ahead. seconds. I'll give you so. a balloon and give you a balloon here. And there's All some right. fun things to do here. Get your get your charge on. Oh, Rub it. That's yeah. a wool this sweater. Wool. That's a wool sweater, by the way. All right. Uh -huh. You can do various things now at this point. Okay. Uh, you can uh, try with this ping pong ball. You can try just rolling that around and see All if you right. can get it to move around a little bit. Or... What do I get let's to see, do? Let's see. You yeah, can there, try, it's following it. There yeah, we you, go. You can try the cereal here. See if you can Whoop. attract the remote. It went right off the table. Take it real slow. And the only problem with this is it bounces. There, you got to move a little bit. There, oh, there, yeah, there, yeah. there it is. Ah. Kind of bizarre. There's an attractive fruit, force there. Fruit Loops are attracted yeah, to me, That's right. And if say. you're hungry, you can eat the Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks. Pretty cool. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> Ted Keller, the science feller. Always entertaining. Thank Thank you, Ted. Yeah, so you. much fun. We learned something and had fun at the same time.